So my name is Adrian Coyle, um, and I, I'm sure a lot of you have already heard this, but I'll just go ahead and say uh, why I wanted to do this project is because um, I've always been interested in math and science, and uh, so everyone has always told me, like, oh, it's so great that you love math and science, and I'd be thinking, why are you telling me that? <laughs> it's just something that I like to do. It's not anything special, and then I, like, later when I was growing up, I realized that it hasn't always been that way that girls have... Uh, been encouraged or um, uh, encouraged to do science, and so I've uh, so I wanted to see if other girls in the U.S. or in France felt the same way that I did, whether they had been discouraged or like actively encouraged for um, to go into science. Um, okay, all right. So I'll start off uh, talking a little bit when I was uh, doing the research for the uh, for the research project. Um, I found a book that was a compilation of Encyclopedia Britannica's 100 most influential scientists of all time, and only 10 of them were women. And uh, also, only three of them are uh, somewhat household, well, actually, I think only two were actually household names, one I actually learned in a science class. But um, other than that, I was thinking, why, why don't we know these women? They're not, uh, and the other, the other scientists in the book were pretty well known. And um, so I also looked up, I found a few other Fren French scientists. I couldn't exactly put Mir Marie Curie up there since she was Polish. But um, her daughter, Irene Joliot, Joliot Curie, was, um, received a Nobel Prize in chemistry. Uh, Cécile DeWitt Moret uh, is a mathematician and physicist. Uh, Yvette Cauchois is a physicist who worked with x-rays. Yvonne Choke Brua is a mathematician and physicist who actually worked with uh, Cecile DeWitt Moret for a time and they published a paper together. But um, none of these women are that well known either. And I realized that some of that could be the with the fact that their work may not be that, in uh, uh, <laughs> may not be that important, but still. Um, I found in one of the books that I read is uh, that woman who managed to make it like through all the prejudice and managed to obtain a degree in science. Um, we're just like in the beginning or in the early 20th century. We're just seen as tools for the men in, in science in the in the labs. For example, the Edward Charles Pickering ran an astrophysics lab at uh, Harvard in the uh, beginning of the 20th century, and he hired women. So it seemed like it was a really great deal and everything, except he hired them to do the grunt work, and they just did math and um, like they were they were just kind of ignored for that. Except uh, even though quite a few of them actually made really important contributions to the study of astronomy. And they actually ended up calling it Pickering Tarum because there was a whole bunch of women there just to, and they call, also called them the Harvard computers because that's what, all they did. <laughs> and uh, in one of my classes, we've read, uh, it's called Philosophy of Science, and we've read two books uh, written uh, about uh, science in the 1950s and 60s, and none of them make any mention of women. It's all men, are, the scientists are only men, and uh, I was just struck by that thinking, it's, I want to be mad at that, but about, mad at the authors for not including that, but that was just a sign of, their, a sign of the times. That's all they knew. Okay. Uh, so Rosalind Franklin's uh, story always seemed a little bit sad to me, just because it's, uh, it seemed like the perfect example of why girls used to be discouraged from science or why they didn't want to go into science, because they felt like this might happen to them. Because she was a great scientist. She was a great crystallographer, and um, she actually came up with the idea of the, the double helical structure of DNA before Watson and Crick did, but um, she was also not welcome in that lab. Nobody, like, the men didn't particularly like her because she wasn't feminine and she, didn't, uh, she wasn't uh, acting like a woman. And so her boss gave her p pictures to Watson and Crick when they decided, uh, and then they didn't actually do any work. They just saw that and made their decisions based on her fo photos and, made, and wrote a paper for Nature magazine and uh, they asked her to write a letter in support of it, and she thought they had done their own work, so she did, and she was perfectly polite and uh, respectful about it, and she eventually switched labs to um, try to find a better one, that, a better one for women. Uh, the, the media specialist and Madame Earl help, uh, at the library in uh, at Vancy helped me find a really great publication called Filles et Garçons sur le chemin de l'égalité, and um, it was published by the French government, and it was basically everything that I needed <laughs> for this project because it gave um, a lot of statistics over um, that the French government had collected over uh, girls and boys and science, and like from elementary school all the way through uh, careers. And um, 
I also got statistics from the women that I surveyed and interviewed. Uh, one of them was a third year engineering student at uh, um, the UTC in Compiègne, and she was, uh, she was really nice and really helpful. Uh, and so through, through these sources, I found that 46.3% of the students that took the baccalaureate scientifique um, were girls, which uh, actually seemed like a, a really great number, it's close to 50%. And I found later that most of the girls that chose to take it studied more biology, and that in, according to the, to the source, that uh, only 1.9% of girls chose to study engineering sciences, while 11.6% of boys did. And actually, my host brother was uh, going into engineering sciences, and he was looking at uh, UTC and other schools for engineering. Uh, but still, the most interesting result of this project that I have found was uh, everything about math. Every time I told someone in France that I was interested in being a veterinarian, they would, the first question that anybody would ask would be, are you strong at math? <laughs> I'd be thinking, I mean, I'm okay, I'm, I'm good enough, I guess. <laughs> and, um, uh, and in the publication, it, meant it had a graph saying uh, that of the girls that, because they actually asked the question whether or not people felt they were good at math, of the girls that felt they were good at math, 64% went into um, or chose to take the the back S, and um, so uh, I, when I and so I think I would like to call that the French's obsession with math because they kept asking that and they they're uh, very focused on that, um, and so I'll talk a little bit more about that when I talk about the girls' uh, responses to my surveys. The engineering student uh, told me that at her university is about 40% girls and 60% boys, and, uh, but she's also studying mechanical engineering, and at least in her year, there's only about 12% girls in her class. Um, uh, she, she said about, but she's an engineering student, so I'm gonna take her word for it that it's pretty much 12. <laughs> um, and at the school, they only had one physique chimie te female teacher and one biology female teacher, which sounds kind of crazy until I thought about how my school has, uh, is not doing even as well as that. So, next. Uh, because my school has a physics department and a chemistry department with eight teachers total that have no women. And it, it seemed crazy to me. I, like, but that was one of the things that interested me about this project. I was thinking there's absolutely no women in those fields, uh, at least in my school. I, mean, I know that there used to be, but not right now. And the biology department and the computer science department is balanced. And so I was thinking that's insane that nobody, that women are in the physics or chemistry department. Um, but as for the, the other statistic about, uh, in 2001, 36.5% of the PhDs uh, in, in science were given to women, while uh, in France it was uh, about 38%, I think. Uh, so for the most part, I got the results that I expected from my, uh, from my uh, uh, questions to the girls. They, uh, nobody had answered that they were uh, pressured by family, friends, or teachers to not go into science. But uh, a very interesting result came from a uh, misunderstanding on my questionnaires. I asked if they felt they had been discouraged, by, uh, uh, discouraged from going into science. And uh, I meant by someone, and they all assume, or, I mean, they also mentioned like whether people had encouraged them, but they also said that uh, they were discouraged because of the math. They said <laughs> <laughs> it was. They said like 45% of the girls mentioned on that survey that they, uh, whether or not they wanted to go into science, that the math was really hard. Some of them said that they were like accepting the challenge of uh, of that difficult math, but others said no, I, I didn't want to. The math was too hard. And, um, uh, and I, just, I still think it's funny because if you think, if like you, if you ask an American person what the most important uh, subject is to be like a doctor or a veterinarian, they'll say, oh, biology, of course, it's a study of, a study of life, and, but France, it's math, <laughs> it's the most important thing. Um, and one of the engineers did say that she had to de deal with some disagreeable people in her job, but other than that, it was not that bad. And other people had uh, also uh, been encouraged, like the women that I talked to had also been uh, encouraged by their family and professors once they showed uh, a liking for science. 
And uh, I have a video of the of a an interview that I did with a physique shimi teacher at uh, Vancy, but uh, if we don't have, uh, we can like come back to it later. Uh, so two more, and then yeah, all right. Um, and the responses from the American girls that I got uh, at my school were about the same. Uh, even though I go to math and science school, not everyone wanted to be an engineer or a doctor. So it was kind of nice to get um, some other results for why people didn't want to go to science even though they were at the school. But um, the, people, the girls that, that didn't want to go into science, uh, they just said it, it didn't interest them. They just weren't, like, they weren't discouraged from it. But um, other than that, like, it just wasn't their cup of tea. <laughs> and, uh, but there was one girl who, the only girl that I mentioned that she had been discouraged by people because she was a girl. Uh, so it really interested me. She said that uh, the women in her family are very traditional and they, they, told, they tried to tell her that she should go into a more uh, feminine job or just be a housewife. But she had also um, was the oldest of her cousins and so her uh, uncles and uh, grandfathers and everyone that uh, um, kind of one nephew, so they kind of treated her like a boy, and they also agree. And uh, so now they're trying to make her be a break the traditions and go into science. Um, so, uh, like, what if the if there's still the that um, the difference in boys and girls in science? I'm wondering, like, from my surveys, I came up with a few things of what we can do uh, to try to promote. Uh, girls in science, and um, quite a few of the American girls mentioned that science was just always around them. Their family members or family friends were scientists, so they had always like grown up with it and they'd seen it in a positive light and that helped make them uh, want to be a scientist. And um, another one of the girls mentioned that uh, my school OSSM was really good for her because it, it also encouraged her to go into science. So I think more uh, schools like that, more schools like OSSM, of course, I would love for there to be more schools like OSSM anyway, but um, <laughs> also if, if just to encourage girls into science would be a really great thing. And there are a lot of programs being implemented like around the world because the European Union has a program called Science. It's a girls thing where they have uh, information on women scientists and uh, like why girls should go into science. And L'Oreal has a website called For Girls in Science with pretty much the same information. And, um, there are also a lot of camps. Uh, I know I've gotten a lot of flyers for camps at universities for girls in science, and um, uh, like summer camps where they can go, and uh, especially engineering. Um, and uh, but I think like these are all really great. But I feel like we should also help uh, target more like elementary school age girls, because by the time girls get to middle school and high school, they've already mostly like most of them have already kind of decided whether or not they like science, and so if we me. <laughs> if we can get to uh, like the younger girls and help uh, like encourage them and be have more positive role models and have uh, um, more in, like uh, more interesting classes and more uh, and help increase their interest in science. And I, I, it's something that I definitely want to uh, want to work with as I like through college and as I get older is trying to help uh, promote girls' interest in science uh, because. I love science, and I want other, gr other girls to love science. And as the engineering student said, les sciences, c'est la vie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's just, I'd just like to thank like, the Alliance Francaise for sending me on this really great trip. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. And um, I learned so much about French culture and improved my French skills. And, um, I like to thank the Robinets for my host family. They treated me like a fam like one of their family, and is uh, they were really nice. Uh, actually, Benjamin was pretty much like my brother. <laughs> he acted like my brother, and so it, it was a nice transition. Um, I also wanted to thank so many teachers. Uh, first, Madame Camus at the at Vancy because she made this trip the best it could be, and uh, she worked really hard, and uh, she was. So nice, Madam Earl, for putting up with, I don't know how she dealt with six kids in a foreign country. Um, I will always be impressed by that. <laughs> and uh, Madam Walker, my, uh, and Madam Robinson for uh, getting me interested in French for, in the first place.